Let's get ready to get started here. Hello, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Good to see you. I see my live chat. Hmm. All right, well, greetings, everyone. Welcome to the Hour of Uncovering, episode number 138. The Gatekeepers, the Boulet. I am your host, Dr. Etienne Graves. It is a pleasure and honor to be with you. Glory to God. Good to see you. Good to see you. The live chat also is going on well. Doesn't seem to be playing on Facebook. Hmm. Okay. Let me see if I can go out and come back in. There we go. All right. I'm just gonna just gonna go from Facebook tonight. Glory to God. It's a pleasure and honor to be with you. I hope you all can hear me. Please let me know if you can. That's just to you. I'm not going to be able to go live on Facebook tonight. I don't know what's going on there. But I'm going to go, I'll be, I will post it after I do this video. So it's a pleasure and honor to be with you this evening. Good to see you, John Faraday, my brother, Robert Duarte. Blessings to you. I call you blessed. Blessings to you and Peter. Good to see you, Lynn. Hello. Blessings to you and Rick. Lynn White, good to see you. Lynn Rail, blessings to you and Rick. Terry Ducharme, good to see you. Lorena, hello. God bless you. God evening to you. Good evening. Denise Martinez. It's not private. It shouldn't be private. It should be public. should be public, it should not be private. I don't know why it says that. Anyhow, glory to God. Uh, Denise Martinez, good to see you for your glory. Hello to you, Sweet Cheeks MAGA. God bless you this evening. Mike 59, Lisa Lynn, hello to you. Glory to God, Erica K, Angelica. Kevin, my brother, good to see you. And good to see you. Greetings to you. Lynn White, thank you for your prayer. Praise God. Lindy, Cindy, good to see you. Linda, God blessings to you. Tina Knox, Patricia King, hello, hello. Blessings, Tina Knox. I so appreciate you. Good to see you. Crystal, blessings to you. Um, Patricia King, blessings to you. It's, I don't know, it's Ephaila. God blessings to you. Glory to God. Christy Crossfit, good to see you. Glory to God. Sorry, Abdul is cool. Good to see you. Everybody can hear me okay? Hear me good? I got a, a little virtual background here, but we're going to get into some deep stuff tonight. And um, of course, YouTube doesn't want me to talk about this stuff, but we're going to talk about the Black community and we're going to talk about gatekeepers. Uh, I'm going to pray in just a moment. I don't have my show for today. I want to say thank God to you. God bless you. To all of you. Thank you, all of you who have donated, who have blessings, blessed me. Um, the ministry, you can do so if you would like to bless the ministry and give an offering, you can, um, or donation at etiengraves.com. You can email me at etiengraves at gmail.com or memo at etiengraves.com. I thank God for you. You can purchase my books also at etiengraves.com. We're going to pray in just a moment and get into this series. I hope you enjoy it. Also on Rumble, if you want to go to my Rumble channel, H period, O period, U period, R period, I just uploaded the latest DNA installation, DNA the most holy place part 14. So you don't want if you don't, hopefully you won't miss that. And um, don't forget to join me on Saturday for our hour of prayer. Uh, 
we're going to do the hour of prayer, but I'm going to do a little message about the Sabbath before that. So you don't want to miss on Saturday. Stephanie L., good to see you. Tammy Dresner, hello, hello. God's blessings to you. So without further ado, let me go ahead and pray. And let's go ahead and get into this message. Glory to the Lord God in the highest. Well, Heavenly Father, we just come to you this evening, give you glory, praise, and honor, ask you to bless this message that goes forth, bless every single person that's watching. Father God, this is your show, your will, have your way, do your do as you please. We ask for the kingdom of heaven to come. I ask you, Father God, to just continue to saturate your love over all of us, saturate us with your love. Thank you for being so gracious and loving and kind. Thank you for restoration. Thank you for favor, favor that's poured out on your people like Niagara Falls, Father God. Thank you for meeting their needs, finances, Father God, provision, Father God, in the name of Jesus, healing, deliverance, guidance, comfort in the name of Jesus, um, salvation, Father God. We just thank and praise you for all of that. We just give you glory, honor, and praise. Holy Spirit, we invite you to have your way. This is your show, your meeting. Bless everyone that's watching now on the replay. We ask for your manifest presence wherever they're watching at, wherever we're watching at right now in the name of Jesus. We just praise and honor you, blood of Jesus. We ask you to have your way to cover us and, and drench us with the blood and cleanse us and wash us and correct us. We ask you, Father God, to loose and release your heavenly holy angels from your throne room to bless us and protect us, your cherubim and holy seraphim in the name of Jesus. Thank you that we bind Satan's power and influences, demon, devils, and angels, any curses, spells, schemes, assignments, and plans of the, of the enemy, any voodoo, hoodoo, I, I food, African water spirits, Oshun. We bind those spirits right now in the name that's above every name. Thank you, Father God, for the spirit of wisdom and revelation that goes forth and for truth going forth right now in the name that's above every name. We just praise you and thank you and love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Glory to God. Let's get to it. Let's get to it. The title is Gatekeepers, the Boule. I'm your host, Etienne Grace, and we're going to get into it now. You're going to hear some truths. You're going to hear some things you might not have heard before, but either way, we're going to get to the word of God. First of all, is the term, before I get into the term, I don't know if you guys have noticed that lately there's a famous rapper, actor going around a tour talking about the gatekeepers because he was trying to do something with his big three basketball league and they wouldn't let him or they wouldn't let you play unless you um, bow down to the gatekeepers, unless you do what they ask you to do, unless you become a slave, then you want to have certain opportunities. So he's going around talking about the gatekeeper tour. And <laughs> strangely enough, you want to hear a strange coincidence about that. Uh, my cousin, who was a former rapper, grew up with Ice Cube. And I've been knowing him since I was in the seventh, since um I was what in the like, eighth grade not good friends but my cousin was one of his best was his best friend so i actually know him good person and he's going around exposing um the gatekeepers and there are gatekeepers in every ethnicity but i'm going to talk about the gatekeepers especially in the black community tonight i.e the boule praise god so hold on to your hats and i had talked about this before but for some reason the powers that be did not want this out and they removed this video. So we're going to try to do it a different way. The Bible mentions gatekeepers, but it does not say gatekeepers. It says porters, P-O-R-T-E-R-S, porter, porters. And the word porters is mentioned 39 times in the KJV Bible. Um, we'll look at a couple of verses right here so you can see what a porter does. Second Kings chapter 7, verses 10 and 11. So they came and called unto the porter of the city. The word porter is the word shoar, which means a janitor, a doorkeeper, but it comes from the root shoar, which means to act as a gatekeeper. In other words, you're not coming into this city, you're not coming into this house, you're not coming into this place unless I, the gatekeeper, the porter, let you in. And the Bible's telling us about that. So they came and called unto the gatekeepers of the city, and they told them, saying, we came to the camp of the Syrians, and behold, there was no man there, neither voice of man, but horses tied, and asses tied, and the tents as they were. Verse 11, and he called the gatekeepers, and they told it to the king's house within. Gatekeepers not only guard for you to be able to come into a situation, to come into a building, to come into a city, to come into an industry, they also go back and tell secrets. They go back and tell. It's like the, the, the house slave and the field slave. The house slave will go tell on the field slave to get in good with master to become the gatekeeper and be afforded certain um, 
delicacies and privileges that the field Negro or field slave was not afforded. Now, come on, we gotta get this kid. We gotta have to get real now. Stay with me. This is all I want you to listen to this and look at the truth. You know, in many churches, they talk and not just churches, but in, in society as a whole, they talk about the curse of ham. And I know you see the background, you see the Baphomet back there because the Baphomet is connected to the gatekeepers and the boule. And you see this right now with this man who is in chains and he's a slave because that's what they are. The, those in the boule would like to keep other black people as slaves. Let's keep going. So what do you know about the curse of ham? Well, when you hear traditionally people speaking about the curse of ham, especially some preachers, um, some ministers, they believe that the curse of ham was the curse of black people because the word ham means heat or brown. So they believe that the curse of ham was a curse on black people because they're black. But the Bible never says that. As a matter of fact, the Bible never even mentions the curse of ham. Search all you want throughout the KJV Bible. Search all you want. I'm not talking about these other translations. Search throughout the Bible and let me know if you see anywhere where you'll find the phrase, the curse of ham. You won't because there is no such thing as the curse of ham. <laughs> but many people, theologians, scholars, and pastors believe that the supposed curse of ham was a biblical justification for imposing slavery or racism on black people. I'm sorry, but I got to give you the truth. I'm not sorry, but I got to give you the truth. I know it sounds bad, but many pastors in the, the olden days justified racism, justified slavery by using the curse of ham. Abolitionist Southern slave owners used the curse of ham as biblical grounds for enslavement. They believe that ham, which in Hebrew means hot, heat, or brown, and his grandson Cush, which means black or blackness, was a sign of being cursed because of the color of their skin and because of, because of that as being a result of Noah's pronounced curse on ham, which never happened, and the black race to an existence of slavery and servitude, which is crazy. So all of the racism, which is even not a real thing, racism is just something that's, I want to say, made up. It's actually something else. And we're going to break all that down. We're going to get deep into this right here. Are you guys enjoying this so far? Deep. So again, there is no such thing as the curse of ham, the curse of Black people being cursed to be used as slaves and for racism. And believe it or not, this was in the church. They did this in the church not just in the world, but also in the church. You will be surprised if you research years ago, 50 years ago, 60 years ago, 40 years ago, 30 years ago, even now that there are churches who segregate and practice division, not racism, it's division that is veiled as racism because they use the justification of the curse of Ham, which is nowhere in the Bible. It's just facts. It's just facts. This blasphemous misconception has allowed the spirit of division. What is racism? It is the spirit of division. There is no such thing as racism. Oh, well, well Etienne Graves, what do you know? What do you mean? I, I'm black. I've experienced racism. I've seen it. No, you haven't experienced racism. It is the spirit of division veiled as racism. That's what they do. The spirit of division. This the it's the spirit of division veiled as racism that brings discord. You know, the Lord says one of the things that he hates is those that bring discord. Hmm. An accord is something that's together. Discord is something that is broken up. And when the Holy Spirit came in as a Russian mighty wind, they were on one accord. But if there's discord, nothing can happen. Even when they built the Tower of Babel and the Lord had to come down and confuse their language because they were on one accord. And when people are on one accord, they can get something accomplished where discord will keep them from getting something accomplished. Is this too much truth for you? Ah, I can already feel the looks that I'm probably getting right now. The spirit of division 
is racist, is disguised as racism and has dominated for centuries and centuries and centuries and has caused a stigma of inferiority and worthlessness in the black community throughout black generations and has given their enslavers a false identity of superiority. Man, nobody wants to talk about this, nobody. But I, before I go even further, be, do you know that in the Bible, the Egyptians were black and they enslaved the Hebrew Israelites, not these factions that you hear today, but they were black people. So you had Pharaoh blacks enslaving blacks. So it didn't start with another ethnicity enslaving blacks. It started with their own people, our own people enslaving us, blacks enslaving blacks. I hope you see where I'm getting going here with these gatekeepers and the boule, which I'm going to explain shortly. Wow, blacks enslaving blacks, but they never talk about that. Even when they had slavery in the early night, in the late 1800s, early 1900s, slavery, guess what? Many of the slave owners were black. No, I'm not trying to um, take away the attention or, or, or turn the attention away from other slave owners who were Arab or who were um, Caucasian. But we're talking about black folk now. We're always our own enemy trying to bring each other down and enslave one another to step on each other to get over and get above another one another to get to a certain place. Facts. You guys want to hear the truth? Let's hear it. You know what swept the nation in 2020 was the Black Lives Matter. We're going to get into that in just a moment. The spirit of division veiled as racism. See, you see, you cannot have a black person who's racist against black people. Doesn't make sense. But it makes sense to have a black person who has the spirit of division against their own people, against the people of the same ethnicity. Division, not racism. But is it division or is it really an unclean spirit? Racism, which is what people call it, but it's division is an unclean spirit. It is a demon or a devil that operates through the cooperative vessels of people or, or people. We have to go to the word to find out some more truth. Now, let's get this here. Remember I told you the Bible never says anything about the curse of Ham. What does the Bible say? And as opposed to tradition and what he, we have been taught, let's see what the word of God says. Because what you're getting ready to find out, there is no such thing as the curse of Ham. Genesis chapter nine, verse one. This is after the flood, okay? And God blessed Noah and his sons and said unto them, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. The opposite of cursing is blessing. God blessed Noah. Now, stay with me. Go down to verse 8, Genesis 9, 8. And God spake unto Noah and to his sons, saying, and I, behold, I establish my covenant, bereath, my compact with you and your seed after you. And as you're going to find out at the end of this, this message, let's try to break this down because this, this will shatter all racism, which is all, the, all of the spirit of division, which is veiled as racism. This, we're going to shatter it again later on in the New Testament. Let's shatter it now. Adam and Eve all came from Adam and Eve. All came from Abraham. After the flood, only Noah and his family was left. So all came from Noah and his sons. So if all came from Adam and Eve, all came from Adam, Abraham, all came from Noah and his sons after the flood, where's the racism at? Where's the division? We are all brothers and sisters. No matter what color your skin is, we all came from Noah and his sons, which means we're fighting each other as we're family. Doesn't make any sense when you think about it. Black, white, red, yellow, doesn't matter. All came from Noah, the father, and his sons under him. So we're all, we're not, I don't want to say related, but we're all related. That makes sense. <laughs> okay, that's too much at 10. Move on, move on. Next subject. Now, let's get to this meat here. Genesis 9:18. it says, and the sons of Noah that went forth of the ark were Shem, Ham, and Japheth. And Ham is the father of, Can of Canaan. Now, when you read that, 
Why would Moses, the writer, through the Holy Spirit, tell us out of nowhere that Ham is the father of Canaan? Canaan was even, where is this coming from? He says, and Ham is the father of Canaan. Where is it? We haven't even seen Canaan yet. Something's about to happen. Verse 19 says, these are the three sons of Noah. Of them, the whole earth was overspread. You hear that? The whole earth was overspread. So you're my brother. You're my sister. I'm your brother. You see? <laughs> and Noah began to be a husbandman, and he planted a vineyard. Deep, 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 deep stuff, deep stuff, deep stuff. Now, let's keep going. And Noah began to be a husbandman, and he planted a vineyard. And he drank of the wine and was drunken, and he was uncovered within his tent. Now, do you know what this is all talking about when it's talking about the nakedness of, 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 of Noah? We're going to find out because the Bible is going to tell us exactly. If you, are, if you ever wondered what happened in Genesis 9, you ever wondered what happened with the nakedness of Noah being seen and what that actually means, the Bible is going to tell us. So we don't need a, 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 a theologian or someone to guess. The Bible is going to tell us exactly what this phrase means. And Ham, verse 22, Genesis 9, 22. And Ham, the father of Canaan, saw the nakedness of his father and told his two brethren without. Underline that, highlight that. Ham, the father of Canaan, who we don't even, there's, we don't know, there is no Canaan yet. Ham, the father of Canaan, saw the nakedness of his father. Ham saw the nakedness of his father. And Shem and Japheth took a garment and laid it upon their shoulders and went backward and covered the nakedness of their father. And their faces were backward and they saw not their father's nakedness. What are they talking about? You know, traditionally, when I was younger, I thought, well, Noah got drunk and took all, off all his clothes and got naked. And Ham reached in, looked in there and peeked in there and saw his nakedness, giggled, hee -hee, and went and told his brothers. But then when you read further, there's more to that. And his brothers came, didn't want to look at the dad, so they put a blanket to cover him. That's what, what we think when we read that on face value, but let's go forward, forward. Verse 24, and Noah awoke from his wine and knew his younger, what his younger son had done to him, had done to him. Mm. Interesting. Knew what his younger son had done to him. What'd he do? And he said, cursed be Canaan. Where, what, who, where does Canaan come from? Cursed be Canaan, a servant of the servants, Shall he be unto his brethren? And he said, Blessed be the Lord God of Shem, and Canaan shall be his servant. Cursed be Canaan. So there is no such thing as the curse of Ham, but there is a such thing as the curse of Canaan, as the Bible specifically tells us. So there's another lie we debunked. There's no such thing as the curse of Ham, but there is a such thing as the curse of Canaan. And who cursed Canaan? Did God curse Canaan or Noah cursed Canaan? Noah cursed Canaan. Now I, need to, I want to share this because this is so deep, but I got to be careful because I don't want them to get mad again like they did before. So I'm going to ask you a question. He saw the nakedness of his father. What does that mean? I'm going to tell you what it means. Before I tell you what it said, what it means in the scripture, I want to tell you what it means. What just off the bat, Ham saw that his father was naked and drunk, not naked, saw that he was drunk, and Ham had sex with Noah's wife, his mother, and impregnated her with Canaan. Mm, did y'all hear that? Am I, am I, I don't see any reactions in the chat there. Did y'all hear that? Ham had sex with Noah's wife, his mother, and impregnated her with Canaan. <laughs> I also believe, we don't know this for a fact, but the perversity in this, that Ham might have done something to Noah as well. Don't know for a fact, but we know this. Ham had sex with Noah's wife, his mother, and impregnated her with Canaan. Hmm. 
Etienne, you crazy. What are you talking? That doesn't make any sense. Okay. Let's look at Leviticus chapter 18, verses 7 and 8. Turn to Leviticus chapter 18, verses 7 and 8. And then I'm going to go to Leviticus chapter 20, verse 11. Okay. Remember, what do we see in, early in Genesis 9? Ham saw the nakedness of his father. Ham saw the nakedness of his father. What does that mean? Leviticus 18, 7 and 8 says, The nakedness of thy father or the nakedness of thy mother shalt thou not, not uncover. She is thy mother. Thou shalt not uncover her nakedness. Look at verse 8. The nakedness of thy father's wife shalt thou not uncover. It is thy father's nakedness. Whoa, wait, whoa, whoa. We were told nothing about the wife. We're told that he saw his father's nakedness. And we're told here, when you see your father's nakedness, then that means you have seen the wife's, the, your, your mother's nakedness or the wife's nakedness. Well, no, at 10, it still doesn't say that. Leviticus 20, verse 11. And the man that lieth with thy father's wife has uncovered thy father's nakedness. Both of them shall surely be put to death. Their blood shall be upon them. Hmm. The man that lies in a sexual manner with thy father's wife has uncovered his father's nakedness. So since we see here that Ham uncovered his father's nakedness, I'm not making anything up. Ham had sex with his mother, Noah's wife, impregnated her with Canaan. Hmm. Noah woke up, saw what he had done to him in that manner, and also maybe something he'd done to him sexually, and knew that Canaan was on the way already, and cursed that seed. That seed. Did y'all know this? Maybe you did, maybe you did. Maybe I'm too late here. You don't believe Leviticus seven one more time. We're gonna take our time with this. Leviticus 18, 7, and 8. Leviticus 20, verse 11. A man that has uncovered his father's nakedness lies with his father's wife. So if you ever wonder what happened, now you know. But how? How could that happen? What, what would make Ham do that? Well, remember the flood. The flood left disembodied giants, unclean spirits who had no body, but they're still spirits. So after the flood, they're looking for somebody who's going to let them come into them, influence them, allow them to do something. And Ham was that person. That is why out of nowhere, Moses tells us that Ham is the father of Canaan when we haven't even heard of Canaan. No such thing as the curse of Ham. It's the curse of Canaan. Um, he saw his father's nakedness, which means he slept with his mother, Noah's wife, and impregnated her. Mm. Ham had desecrated his DNA, his bloodline, once he did this, but would have still been accepted because of the covenant. You notice that Noah didn't curse Ham? Oh, that's whoosh. Noah didn't curse Ham because God blessed Noah. And his sons can't curse what God has blessed, but he cursed Canaan. Mm. Mm. Canaan was, and when Canaan was cursed, he knew what he was going to be dealing with. So, of course, Canaan was depressed because of his grandfather's curse, not God's curse, but he was depressed. He was lowly. He was down. Canaan was, the word Canaan, it means to bend the knee. Wait a minute. Didn't they... Wasn't Colin Kaepernick bending? Wasn't Black Lives Matter bending the knee? Didn't they in Pelosi and them in Congress in the Kente cloth bend the knee? Canaan means to bend the knee, humiliated, to bring into submission. Hmm. Which means that Canaan, that bloodline, the black bloodline, which when you do and read in Genesis 10, many giants came through that bloodline. Egyptian giants came through that bloodline. So Canaan, knowing he's going to be depressed, knowing he's going to serve his brothers, hmm, knowing all that, down, depressed, lowly. So it didn't take much for an unclean spirit disembodied from the flood 
to come and tempt him and say, hey, you don't have to be depressed. If you do this, if you do this ritual, if you participate in this, then guess what? I'm going to make you mighty. I'm going to influence you. Didn't seem like Canaan accepted it, but somebody in just a moment. It's through Ham's bloodline where the giants after the flood came through. Giants had no physical body but were unclean spirits roaming the earth looking to be reborn and live through DNA, live in a physical material body. Animals, humans, they infiltrated and contaminated and perverted the Egyptians, not the real Hebrews, uh-oh, who were also black people. Hmm. I don't really want to get into this because it's it's so this part right here because it's so deep. Let's see. Black people all the way back in being enslaved from Hebrew Israelites enslaved under Pharaoh, then you fast forward to 2020. Hmm, and there's a disease called COVID-19. In John chapter, let's go there really quick. I didn't plan on doing this. Let's go to St. John chapter 19 and put all these puzzles, piece of puzzle pieces together. John chapter 19. Why was it COVID-19? John chapter 19 says, verse one, then Pilate therefore took Jesus and scourged him scourged him the number 19 means lack or ashamed now i know many people believe that jesus was one color he was this color he was that color we know that the bible tells us he was jewish but can i ask you a question my brothers and sisters how can you hide out remember the the, the herod put out a decree to kill all the male children under three years old how could you hide out in Egypt for three years? You know, Jesus, Mary, Moses, Jesus, Joseph, and Mary hid in Egypt for three years. Egypt is where people of darker skin color reside. How could he hide in Egypt for three years and not be detected? Also, just for food for thought, do you know when Jesus was made to carry his cross? Out of all the people in the Bible, there was one man who was chosen to carry the cross for him. This man was a black man who carried the cross of Jesus. Why am I saying that? Because why? All this, why? Something's going on here. Hmm. Something's going on here, but I'm going to leave that alone for right now. Let's continue with our message. That's not the purpose. That's another topic for another time. Oh, come on, Etienne, get off of that. So the spirit of division and racism has nothing to do with color because the first slavery was black people enslaving another black people, other black people. Anthony Johnson, look it up. Anthony Johnson was the first black American slave owner in 1621. The number 19 means lack, shame, ashamed, and guilt. No wonder they used it. No wonder they did that. It's not about skin color with God. It's nations and false gods. Hebrew and Egyptian blood was forbidden to mix, not because of skin color, but because of the gods that they served. And the mixture of Nephilim blood in that bloodline. Man, this is good stuff. The original slave owners followed Pharaoh's pattern of slavery as a guideline for blacks much later in history. The Pharaohs, Pharaoh tried to destroy the Hebrew family. Uh-oh, that sounds like Black Lives Matter. That sounds like Planned Parenthood. That sounds like abortion. Man, you hit not the park with this, Etienne. Woo-woo! home run. <laughs> Separating the fathers from their families and killing their babies. Planned Parenthood. Pharaoh did that back in the Egyptian days when they slaved the Hebrews. Nothing new. It was God, capital G-O-D, 
versus the gods, lowercase g o d s s of Egypt. Those ten plagues that God sent were against ten gods that the Egyptians served. Wow. Who will you serve? Who is your allegiance to? What will happen with the Black Lives Matter with the holding up that fist? Hey, my allegiance is to the black people, not knowing that the statue ball has his fist raised just like that. And the travesty of everyone saying, well, I'm black, so I got to follow this Black Lives Matter is nothing but a lie of the enemy. Mm, 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 mm. Who will you worship? Will you bend the knee? Will you bend the knee? <laughs> oh, this is so deep. Man. Oh, can I keep going, you guys? Can I keep going? Pharaohs and priests belong to the Brotherhood of the Snake. Now, you're going to see where Freemasonry started, secret society started, the Illuminati, all this started. And I quote this from the book, The Gods of Eden, pages 90 to 93. Brotherhood teaching was arranged as a step-by-step -step process. Think about degrees. A student was required to satisfactorily complete one level of instruction before proceeding to the next one. Wait a minute, you mean our school system, first grade, second grade, third grade, junior high school, high school, is the same thing, the same system that came through these pharaohs and priests? You bet it did. Mm. You want the truth, don't you? Can we get the truth? All pupils took oaths of secrecy in which they swore never to reveal the teaching of a level to any person who had not yet graduated up to that level. The teachings of the brotherhood in ancient Egypt were organized into an institution known as the mystery schools. So our system of kindergarten, high school, junior high school, high school, college, same thing came from the mystery schools. First degree, third degree, sixth degree, 32nd degree came from the mystery schools. Mm. This school system was not supposed to be the way it is because they started that. Grand master, the term they're using Freemasonry, grand master is the most common title used by brotherhood organizations way back with the pharaohs to designate their top leaders. What do Freemasons use? Grand master, worshipful master. It is the common, most common title used by brotherhood organizations to designate their top leaders. Guild members were often free men or Freemasons. This is back in the days of Pharaoh. Allegories, symbols, and costumes became extremely important because of their value. Aprons and, and compasses and T-squares and Man, this is good. I'm getting excited just talking about this. Think about this. Israel, Israel, I-S-R-A-E-L. What's in the middle of that word? Ra, Pharaoh, P-H-A-R-A-O-H. What's in the middle of that word? Ra, Israel. He's asking the Israel, I'm the one true God. Is ra -el? L means God. Is Ra God? No. Pharaoh, F-P-H-A-R-A-O-H, you see Ra, the sun God, he's right there smack dab in the middle of that word. Mm, mm, mm. Is Ra L? Is Ra God? That's what he's saying. Is when Israel defeats these giants and defeats the, is Ra God? No, I'm God. I love that. Is Ra L? He's not. <laughs> Glory to God. The curse of Canaan, not Ham. He was to be a servant in bondage to his brothers. This was some of the justification for slavery. Hey, you are already cursed. So Canaan being humiliated and downtrodden. Don't worry, we're going to get to where the blue leg comes into play. Canaan being humiliated and downtrodden with low self-esteem, focused on the trauma of his conception. He felt sorry for himself and opened his bloodline up to invasion. Black people, this, hear this, and I want you to hear this well. Black people, for too long, far too long, have allowed our trauma, our past abuses, and things that have happened to us as children 
to be used as a tool for the enemy to ignite and control us like puppets. They'll show you things and do things to ignite that trauma, trigger it that's in you that has never been released or dealt with or we have never been delivered from. <laughs> Ooh, man, this is deep. Nephilim were men of renown, famous or fame. So while these unclean spirits are looking for somebody in this bloodline that's cursed, somebody that they can influence to do some kind of rituals, to do some kind of rituals that can get, that can make this in the bloodline become a Nephilim. Nimrod was presented with an option to become great, a recruitment. Oh, like they do in the Illuminati, like they do in Freemasonry, like they do in fraternities and sororities. Yes, I'm going to get into that too. Fraternities and sororities, especially the Divine Nine or the Beaglows, the Black Greek letter organization societies, all of not just the Black ones, but also the, the white ones as well. Fraternities and sororities, when you do the oath, you are oath, giving an oath to a god or a goddess. I've researched it. The hand signals, the stepping, the dancing to gods and goddesses, veiled under fraternities and sororities. Mm. Mm, mm. recruitment man this is deep 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 lord please protect this channel glory to god well he was he accepted the proposal of these unclean spirits and giants he took a secret oath nimrod did and participated in ritualistic ceremonies hmm. like they make you do in the boule when you got to have sex with the same sex you got to have sex with an animal bestiality why bestiality, where I have that picture behind me with Baphomet, because Baphomet connects to the boule. Ooh, man, stinging here. He became a mighty one. Nimrod wasn't, born, uh, wasn't a born Nephilim. Through that bloodline of Canaan, they came to him to recruit him, and he engaged in ritualistic activity and became a mighty one. Ritualistic ceremonies became a giant and his genetic system was rewritten and rewired, becoming an extension for an otherworldly spirit who had lost their body and now had a body to influence. You think these um, celebrities and athletes just have so much, they're just so talented? Or is it possible these Nephilims are living in them, giving them this talent and this ability in order for them to get the praise, for them to have a body and a host to live into, for them to get the fame? I wonder when the word says in Genesis chapter 10, verse eight, that Nimrod began to be a mighty one, a Gaborim, a Nephilim. How do you begin to be a Nephilim when you're not born like one? The word began is the Hebrew word kalal, which means to become profaned, defiled, polluted, or desecrated, or violated ritually, sexually, or genetically. The Tower of Babel, which Nimrod was instrumental in building, looks like a DNA strand, and the people spoke, count them, spoke exactly 46 words about the Tower of Babel in Genesis chapter 11, I believe, 46 chromosomes, 23 from your mother, 23 from your father, making 46, trying to be, build a portal to the gods or the devils to allow them to alter their DNA. So how did Nimrod become a Nephilim? He did some kind of ritualistic degrading, sexual, bestiality, blood drinking, the same things that can be done now. Mm, mm, mm. They came to Nimrod in secret psst, psst, hey, hey, and persuaded him to be used by them for fame, fortune, power, and control. The same thing that they're doing now. He participated in some rituals of human sacrifice, cannibalism, blood drinking, sex, orgies, bestiality, bisexuality, sorcery, magic, secret oaths, and satanic rituals, which is, is, which is what is the underground entrance point for the boule and secret societies. This is mind-blowing, huh? What happened to Nimrod? What happened to... This is mind-blowing. Did you guys know any of this stuff about uh, uh, Ham sleeping with his mother? Now, And the Bible tells us that? Did you know that there's no such thing as the curse of Ham? I bet if you Google it, I bet if you look it up, the curse of Ham, all this stuff will come up. And the Bible never mentions the curse of Ham. 
these Nephilim spirits came to the ones who are most vulnerable and likely to accept their offer. It's always the same story with black celebrities, athletes, musicians, and actors. Did you ever notice the same story? When you hear their story, they always started in poverty, in the ghetto, single family homes, most of them single homes with no father, trauma, abuse, broken homes, like I said, with no father, extremely poor. Then their talent makes them become great. It's not their talent, it's the unclean spirits that enhance their natural abilities for them to receive fame and fortune while the Nephilim spirit receives the worship and a host body to live in. Mm, mm, mm. Mind blowing. These secret societies, whenever you see the word secret, I always think about DNA. These secret societies and fraternal, fraternal organizations provided their members with aid, protection, and advantages. That's what happened. And here, how we're going to get into where the boule started. It started in 1904 when Henry Minton started this. You see, when they started the, the, the skull and bones, Freemasonry, Blacks were not allowed in there. Racism, the vision was there as well. They didn't allow racism. So they had to have a gatekeeper start a Black Freemasonry faction under Freemasons. Prince Hall Freemason. Prince Hall was used to start Prince Hall Freemasonry in 1904. The first African-American Greek society, secret society was formed in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania by Dr. Henry Minton, a black man. I need to show you the picture of this. Dr. Henry Minton and five of his colleagues, Henry Minton and five of his colleagues started the Boule. What is the Boule? The Boule is an acronym for Sigma Pi Phi Demons and pronounced Boule. It was formed to bring together a select group of educated black men and women. And for what they do is they go through the fraternities and the sororities and they recruit successful men and women, doctors and lawyers and business owners and all these, recruit them and say, promise them advantages. Can you see? Promises them advantages. I'll post the pictures over and afterwards. Promises them advantages if they will join. They covered it? Let me see. Oh, you're right. <laughs> it did cover. It's all good. It's all good. No problem. I'll I'll post some pictures. I, I, I know you couldn't see it. My fault, but I'll, I'll post some where you where you can you can see it. A gatekeeper is an attendant employed to control who goes through the gate. That's what a gatekeeper is. Hmm. This black elite society based on skull and bones fashioned after Yale skull and bones was chosen by the US government Illuminati to run black neighborhoods. They assigned archons called lords, uh-huh, masters or demons. And this is where it gets very deep. It's gonna get deep now. Whoa, in school, what do we learn about black history? What do we learn? Oh, W.E.B. Du Bois and, and Martin Luther King and, and all these great. I'm about to shatter some of your uh, misconceptions. See, they don't teach you history. They tell you his story, what, you, what they want you to know. And they revere these Blacks that they want you to learn about because they were so great when they actually were sellouts, boule members, and servers of Luciferianism. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Check it. 
W.E.B. Du Bois was the first one. And what they wanted to do was they wanted the educated, the, the smart blacks to be to represent those blacks who couldn't represent themselves. So they assigned 10 percent. They assigned the gatekeepers of themselves. So W.E.B. Du Bois wasn't a great person. He sold out his people to be a gatekeeper and to join the boule. How? By allowing Mar um, Margaret Sanger to make a deal with her to build Planned Parenthood in black neighborhoods. Wow, crazy. But it doesn't stop there because not only that, through fraternities and sororities, they recruited through the church, the church, the church. If you look at the symbol for the boule, it is a sphinx. A sphinx is a winged female monster in Greek mythology, having a woman's head and a lion's body and noted for supposedly killing anyone unable to answer its riddle. In ancient Egypt, the Sphinx was a spiritual guardian gatekeeper and most often depicted as a male with a pharaoh headdress, as is the great Sphinx. In Greek, Sphinx means the strangler. If someone is like a Sphinx, it just means they're mysterious and quiet. Wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. Sphinx means the strangler. Hmm. What happened to George Floyd? Oh, maybe you didn't know this. Guess who has a huge, larger than life tattoo on their chest of the Sphinx or the Boule logo? None other than the one who's benefited from this, LeBron James. Ooh, I'm about to post these pictures because it's not letting me show them. Oh my goodness. Etienne, you're going too far. Picture of LeBron James. I don't know if y'all can see that. I don't know. Can y'all see it? Probably not. I'm about to post these pictures. I'm going to post a litany of pictures um, on Facebook with this teaching. LeBron James with the Boule Foundation, big, huge, larger than life tattoo on his chest. See, the Boule is for those. It's not the boule is for those that didn't go to college. The boule is for the famous ones, the elite, the 10% of all, the, the highest echelon of blacks. The other one, they, they go through fraternities and sororities for other things. But the boule, you know, it's not for college. It's for those that's out of it. Says, he says, Saturday, this is, I quote LeBron James Saturday, I took Pilates, I took Pilates classes, yoga classes, swimming at auditoriums back home. I can't tell you exactly where it was at. It's a secret place. We hold a secret society over there. Out of his own mouth. Couldn't even keep it a secret itself. Unbelievable. Interesting that the same year that Kobe Bryant died in order to release what happened with COVID and the shutdown and the lockdown, they made the NBA go to Disney, uh-oh, you know about Disney, 22 teams in one location, there's 30 teams in the NBA, all this to get LeBron James a championship, a bubble championship, which they gave to the Lakers. Why? Because he's dedicated to the boule. All of this goes together. Wait a minute. So are you saying that LeBron James could be directly or indirectly involved in um, championing the decision to eliminate Kobe Bryant for his game? You bet I'm saying that. And I'm not stuttering when I say it. Allegedly, I'll say that. <laughs> Boy, this crazy. Man. Crazy, crazy, crazy. All right, let me keep going. The boule or the talented 10th. Prince Hall, Freemasonry, the Black Freemasons, and the Divine Nine, the Beaglows, Black Greek Letter Organization Societies. Look at the signs, look at the steps, look at the things that they do. Divine Nine. Not only that, Shriners, Eastern Stars, there is always a Master Mason 
a gatekeeper controlling the people through a black minor mason and causing events that ignite the trauma, the DNA frequency of black folks and control them through music, through food, through violence, <laughs> you name it. Protect the system. House Negroes kill their own people. If anyone has alleged and plays an oath in a fraternity or a so, so, for, for sorority, you need to renounce and denounce as quickly as soon as possible because it'll be carried through your bloodline. It's connected to Freemasonry. It's connected to the boule. All of them is there together. Well, who's the boule? The boule goes for the, the big names, oh, allegedly. Obama, Oprah, allegedly. Uh, uh, Bill Cosby, allegedly. Jesse Jackson, Al Sharpton, allegedly. That's why when something happens, the George Floyd and all those things, who do they call on? The boule, back broken members, Jesse Jackson and Al Sharpton, who are supposed to be reverence but never talk about God. Never. Y'all, this is deep. Deep, deep, deep. Let me name something for you. Oh, man. And this is one thing, again, allegedly, in order to be inducted, in order to be in, to, to be inside the bootleg, you got to be rich, you got to be famous, like the ones I named, but you also got to do some ritualistic ceremony thing like Nimrod did, i.e. bestiality, sex with donkeys, sex with animals, all kinds of things that you, same sex, things you don't know about, black me, well, film you doing it. If you do it, we'll expose you, but it's perverse, which is why we have the baphomet up there, part beast, part human, part man, part woman, part man. Breast, angel, part human, part goat, all this. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. All those that you love, all those that you revere. Nelson Mandela, allegedly a Prince Hall Freemason, mm, member of the Boule. Thurgood Marshall, what? He's great. Prince Hall Freemason, allegedly. Richard Pryor, Prince Hall Freemason, allegedly. Mega Evers, Prince Hall, Freemason, allegedly. I know people are going to be mad about this. W.E.B. Du Bois, Prince Hall, Freemason, allegedly. Man, brother, you were going to it. What about them Boule? How about the Boule members? Bill Cosby, Nat King Cole, Buzz Aldrin, Scotty Pippen, Chris Tucker, Telly Savalas, allegedly. <laughs> what do all these men have in common? Allegedly, they are members of the world's oldest fraternity. True Workers Lodge number seven. Take your place in history. Wow. 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 Martin Luther King allegedly was a member of the Boule. When he decided to leave the Boule is when he was allegedly assassinated. He left the Boule two months before he was assassinated. Mm -hmm. And something else that doesn't sit right with me that I've learned, which is back to the boule. I, I know we all love Martin Luther King, but the boule, the truth, do you know that he had a gay speechwriter named Bayard Rustin? Martin Luther King's speechwriter's name was Bayard, B-A-Y-A-R-D, last name Rustin, R-U-S-T-I-N, professed gay speech writer. Mm. That's a nugget there that maybe none of you guys even knew. Whew. So my respect for Dr. Martin Luther King starts after he left the boule. Mm-hmm. All the great things you think he did, and he said he was put there by the Boule, the Illuminati. So my respect for him comes from leaving because he knew by leaving he was going to be killed. I see the mountaintop. I'm not, I might not get there with you. Right. He knew he wasn't going to get there, but
but the respect comes for him leaving and turning away. Mm, 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 mm. There's a verse in the Bible. Let me show you this real quick. We got you guys got a little more time. Let me show you this verse in the Bible that talks about what happened. I believe with the with allegedly with Dr. Martin Luther King. Isaiah is it fifty eight or fifty nine? Yes. Look at this. Yay, this Isaiah 59, 15. This is what happened with him. And it says, yea, truth fails. And he that departs from evil makes himself a prey. And the Lord saw it and it displeased him that there was no judgment. He who departs from the boule makes himself a prey. And that's exactly what happened to him. Facts that you never knew. And even a bigger fact is, you can look this up, that the CIA, the government was found guilty of assassinating Martin Luther King and settled with the family for $1. They sued for only that because they would not have got the truth to come otherwise. Hmm. Which means CIA, government, Illuminati, runs the boule. Took him out because he left the boule. Man, you dropping some, some nuggets there, boy. Freemasons refer to Nimrod as the great architect. Freemasonry is where no black man can be a 33rd and a half degree member. You may not want to believe it, but Freemasonry was what this country was founded on. Well, I thought George Washington and the founding fathers, they, they established this nation on God. Wrong. They established this nation on Freemasonry and mixed it with God worship, but what God? Not the God we serve. On that dollar bill where it says, in God we trust, that's mammon. So this country was founded on Freemason principles, tried to inter inter um, interweave the Bible in there. Man, y'all don't want to hear this. I'm, I'm dropping too much truth. I could just, I could just feel this just, <laughs> it's just drop like this. It's just too much too by your boy, man. Oh my goodness. Since no black man could become a 33rd and a half great degree member, therefore they were relegated to the inferior faction of Prince Hall Freemasonry. They staged the jewel. Ah, oh, stop, stop it, Chin. Let it go. Keep going. <laughs> Let me see what I can get. All right, all right, all right. Uh, shoo, 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 shoo. Man. Man, I don't know if I want to. Let's go for it. I want you to notice some exa and examine some Masonic secret society elements to what happened with George Floyd that became a catalyst to a nationwide riot of all the people. Here it goes. The ritual lasted for eight minutes and 46 seconds. Same time that the American Airlines Flight 11 hit the first tower, the Twin Towers, the same time. Wait a minute. The ritual for George Floyd lasted for eight minutes and 46 seconds, but the Flight 11 hit the first tower, Twin Towers, of American Airlines at 846. Oh my gosh. Man, oh uh, just the, the George Floyd killed in 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 Minneapolis. The sun, <laughs> are y'all ready for this? George Floyd killed in Minneapolis on May 25th. The sun set at 8:46 p.m. in Minneapolis on May 25th, 8:46 p.m. Oh my gosh. Mm. 8 represents the DNA strand. 46 represents chromosomes. This ritual occurred on East 38th Street on the same street as the Prince Hall Grand Masonic Lodge. Benjamin Crump, who you always see on TV that wants to be the civil rights attorney, the family's attorney, is a member of the Boulet. Look it up. Benjamin Crump, a member of the Boulet, and is a Prince Hall Freemason. Now you see why it all goes together with Al Sharpton and Jesse Jackson, why they bring them on the scene, because they ain't going to do nothing that's going to go against them because they are the gatekeepers. You're not doing nothing in Hollywood. You're not doing nothing in sports. You're not doing nothing in any kind of successful thing in the black community unless you go through the gatekeepers. Man, 
Oh, I got Can I do some more? Lord, please protect this in the name of Jesus. The ritual also occurred on Memorial Day, which honors those killed def defending our country. During Masonic rituals, they kneel before the grave of Hiram Abif as a memorial. What does Canaan mean? To bend the knee. What did Nancy Pelosi and them do in Congress? They bent the knee with the kente cloth. Man. Too much mind boggling. Lord, protect this. <laughs> protect the name of Jesus. Ooh, this shows the secret societies using the supposed curse of hand, which is not in existence, and ensuing trauma of slavery to control black people. Showing them what happened, making them run into the streets. When George Floyd out that cry, that yell, that was a frequency, a sound that triggered and released mind control, like the Rice Resonant Experiment. You ever seen the Rice Resonant Experiment? Look it up, the Rice Experiment, where they took some rice and they poured it on the sounding board and then they turned up the tone. As the tone goes up, the rice begins to take a shape. They pour rice on the sounding board, just pour it on there and begin to turn the tone up. As the tone goes up, the tone goes higher. The rice takes a shape, makes a shape. Look at that. Look at it on YouTube, check it out. Look at it on Google, Rice Resonance experiment. That's the same thing that they got. Man, you know, coming up with my three year anniversary, might as well give it, give it a bang, right? This leads us to this Black Lives Matter. Oh, did I say lies? Is it Black Lives or Lies? Who we know comes from the spirit of Oshun. It's Black Lives, but Black Lives really matter. If you remove the word lives, you have Black Matter, huh? Black matter is released by CERN. We talked about that and has demonic, unclean spirits attached to it like Nephilim giants. Hmm. Man, amazing. Do you guys know who the founder of the Black Lives Matter was? Hmm. He has the first, the same first name as our first president. And his last name is the first, first five letters in sorority. Don't put it in the chat. <laughs> Don't put it in there. Glory to God. Baal, a statue, a figure of fertility, agricultural God who demanded human sacrifice, especially children. That's why they have Planned Parenthood in Black neighborhoods. When they see them put that fist up for Black Lives Matter, that is the statue of Baal holding up the fist. All Boule members are, and, and sorority members, the three founders of Black Lives Matter were three lesbian witches. I'm not just calling them witches. You gotta maybe they changed now, but you gotta check their Twitter site, check their handle, check the website. They profess to be witches, literal witches, lesbian witches. What did Pharaoh do? Remove the man from the home, from the family. That's what they wanted to do. They don't want the black man, they don't want a man in the family. They don't want that. They're for abortion, they're for LGBT, they're for all of that. The initials are GS. G as in GS is the one who founded it. <laughs> Patrice Cullors proudly was a, is a proudly practicing lesbian since the age of 16 and encouraged children worldwide to do the same. She describes herself as a wife of Harriet Tubman. She advocates dramatically for the reducing of the law enforcement budget and forcing some police departments to be entirely disbanded or abolished. Harriet Tubman was also a Freemason. <gasps> How could you say that? She's a gatekeeper. But she's black and she had led the Underground Railroad. Yeah, because she was a gatekeeper. How do you think she knew the way out? How do you think she knew what, the way to go? And Brother Graves, you're just doing too much. Stop it. Alicia Garza, a self-described queer social justice activist, her stated goal is to foster a network that affirms all forms of homosexual and bisexual deviance and to free the mind of man from God's normal heterosexual order. God, man, woman, children. No, God, women, children. That's what they want. They want to remove the man just like Pharaoh did. Mm, 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 mm. Man, brother, you're going, you're going hard. You're going deep. Opal Tometi, 
a firm believer and practitioner of liberation theology, LGBTQ advocate committed to dismantling the core biblical concept of male leadership, feminism, the disorder, bringing disorder to the order of God. Get the man out the home like Pharaoh did. Get the man out the home like Planned Parenthood. Get the man out the home like welfare. Get that man out that family because the problem, the issues with our society now is fatherless homes. Well, nobody want to talk about that. <laughs> man, you just get too deep. Three witches, witches that cast spells. Check it. They profess to be witches. And black people, because of the trauma, because they want to join because of the color of their skin, I'm going to join with them. Black Lives Matter because they're black. I don't care if they're witches. I don't care if they cast the spells. I don't care if they serve ball. I don't care if they're Nephilim. I don't care. It's black. I'm all for it. When, when will we wake up? When will we wake up? They have professed that they're supporters of abortion and they're also trained Marxists. Mm. Their goal was to change the black biblical family and to get Trump out of the White House. Sounds like Pharaoh to me. Woo, woo, woo. <laughs> selling out their own people, gatekeepers, boule, selling out their own people. Wow, wow, wow. Do you know if you read um, Canaan's last will and testament, part of it says, love one another, love robbery, love newness, hate your masters, and do not speak the truth. Man, if, that, if anything sounds like Black Lives Matter, it sure is that. Brother, you're going deep. The Baphomet, which means Sophia or wisdom, uh, is male and female, goat-headed, god of transformation, god of Freemasonry, god of transgenderism. Worship by Freemasons as the sign of Satan, a symbol used in the occult and in witchcraft. Baphomet, Mohammed, Mohammed, Bapho, baptized Medes, fire. Hmm. Daniel talks about that in Daniel chapter 8, verse 5. And as I was considering, behold, an eagle came from the west on the face of the whole earth and touched not the ground. And the goat had a notable horn between his eyes. The Baphomet. Daniel's even talking about that. Unreal. Mm -mm -mm -mm. I don't think I'm gonna, I might not want to mention that. I'm gonna end it here because I, I, I'm, I'm afraid if I say this, they really gonna get mad. <laughs> Man, I'm going to take a chance. Lord, Lord, I'm taking a chance. I'm going to take a chance. Lord God, I just praise you. I praise you right now. I'm going to take a chance on this. Who else was joined with Black Lives Matter? I'm going to spell it. A-N-T-I. Don't put it in the chat. A-N-T-I-F-A-H. A-N-T-I-F-A-H. Do you know what that is? A-N-T-I means instead or in the place of like antichrist instead of or in place of Christ. F-A-H is a musical note. Uh-oh. A-N-T-I, instead or in place of, F-A-H, a musical note. Do, re, mi, fa, like that. King Nebuchadnezzar, corresponding to that everyone that hears or, or that hears the sound must obey all kinds of music and will fall down and worship the golden image. You guys know what color um, Joyce Voice casting was? <laughs> I'll give you one guess. Gold. A-N-T-I-F-A-H backwards is fitna, F-I-T. Well, not backwards, excuse me. It's ha-fitna, ha-fitna. And it's, a, it's an Arabic, an Arabic word. It means temptation, trial, civil, tri civil strife, and conflict. The Antichrist agenda to divide and conquer veiled through racism. So now you see why Ice Cube's talking about the gatekeepers. Now you see. Now you see. Go along, get along, gang. The gatekeepers open the door and they engage in perverse rituals. Hey, well, I, I'm rich and you're not, you know? And think about that. Think about the, the, the dedication to get a big, huge sphinx Boule Foundation tattoo on your chest, i.e. LeBron James, and have all the things handed to you that he has. Accident? No. 
I'll tell you one thing, wouldn't have happened if he had not seen someone be eliminated, i.e. Kobe Bryant. Anyway, I'm going to end this here. I don't have the verse. Let me, let me see if I can get the verse for you. I'm going to end it here because this is the bottom line for all of us. All of us to understand. Is it Galatians 3.28? And I think it's Acts. Galatians 3.28 and Acts 17.26. Acts 17.26, Galatians 3.28. Because I don't care what color you are, color your skin is. We are all of the same race. Therefore, there's no such thing as racism with humans. Uh, serpent seed, aliens, that's a different race. So if there's racism, yeah, we're racist against aliens, <laughs> against other, yeah, we're racist against that, but we're all of the human race. Black, white, red, brown, yellow, same race, human race. And Acts 17, 26 tells us, and has made of one blood. How many blood? One blood. No matter what color you are, if you get cut, guess what color you're going to bleed? Red. If you're human, one blood. One blood. One more time. One blood. And have made of one blood all nations of men. Nations. The word nations is the word ethnos. Ethnos, which means it says a race here, a tribe, a people, nationalities, ethnicities. For has made of one blood all ethnicities, all skin colors of men for to dwell on all the face of the earth and have determined the times before appointed and the bounds of their habitation. Galatians 3.28, there is neither Jew nor Greek, neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female for we are all one in Christ Jesus. Not about this, not about transgenderism. We are all one in Christ Jesus. We are one in Christ Jesus. We all have unity and liberty in Christ Jesus. Amen. Glory to God. All right, I'm going to end this here. This was exciting. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to post a plethora of pictures on Facebook. If you're a member of my um, Hour of Uncovering group, you're going to see these pictures on there. I'm going to try to post them on YouTube, but I probably can't. But I'm going to post a plethora of them on Facebook when I post the, the teaching of this um this where i post this teaching and you'll see some of the pictures i'm talking about you're my brother i'm your sister let's pray Heavenly father we just come to you right now just thank you for exposing all the gatekeepers father god for bringing all these secret societies down father god bringing all those that want to be above us father god and put us down and pit us against each other father god we as one accord come against the spirit of discord come against the spirit of racism come against the spirit of division that's veiled as racism father god we just thank you praise you father god for bringing us on one accord father god brothers and sisters father god being able to join together this is why you said that two or three touch and agree shall be done anything shall be done for them on earth as it is in heaven you didn't say if two or three blacks two or three whites, two or three touch and agree. You also said, Father God, with two or three are gathered together, I am there in their midst. In your name, when they're gathered together, not two or three black people or two or three white people, two or three people, if they're gathered together in your name, you are there, Father God. Thank you, Father God, for pouring out your love and pouring away the scales of the eyes of the people, the pastors, those in the pulpit, Father God, those in the community that want to destroy their own race, destroy the black people, Father God. Thank you, Father God, for just healing and delivering those, Father God, who hate black people, even the black people who hate black people. Father God, we ask you, Father God, to deliver us from this spirit of division, Father God, in the name of Jesus. We just thank you, Father God, for your justice, Father God, for your love, for your liberty. We are all of one blood. We thank you, Father God, for being able to use us in a mighty way, Father God, because we are all brothers and sisters which come, Father God, from Noah and his sons. We love you. We honor you. We praise you, Father God. In Jesus' mighty, magnificent name we pray. Amen. Glory to God. All right, what y'all think about that? Was I too excited? Was I too animated? Did I go too far? Woo! Lord, we ask you to protect this channel, Father God. Protect it, Father God. Protect it. We ask you to protect this message, Father God. We ask you, Father God, to build it, Father God, so the powers that be won't even see it, Father God. Thank you, Father God, for there not being any keywords that stand out, Father God. We thank you, Father God, for the truth that's gone forth in the name that's above every name. Bless it, Father God. Bless this message. Bless you. Thank you, Father God. We honor you and praise you in a mighty, magnificent name. 
Glory to the Lord God. Hey, what y'all think about that? Did y'all enjoy this? Was it a lot of, was it so much truth in there that it blew your mind? Blew my mind. Man, I thought that Ham just saw his daddy naked. Wrong. <laughs> I thought Nimrod was always a nephew. Wrong. Wrong. I thought LeBron James just got lucky. Wrong. <laughs> Woo. Mm. All right. Bless you guys. I call you blessed. Thank you for hearing me. Uh, I will see you on Saturday for our hour of prayer. Not do, only do we do the hour of uncovering and do we expose. And I said the hour of uncovering. This is not the hour of uncovering. This is a special broadcast on Thursday. But also we pray and we're going to do the hour of prayer on Saturday, 10 o'clock a.m. I'm going to take a short, maybe 30 minutes just to teach you about the, the truth about the Sabbath in the Bible. And then we're, excuse me, we're going to go ahead and go in. We're going to go ahead and pray. Praise God. I hope that you guys are seeing answers to prayer. If not, we've already prayed. We know the Lord heard and has sent the answers. We're just now waiting for the manifestation. Praise God. Remember the truth. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Praise reports. There have been people who have received jobs, finances, bills paid. God has came through for them just in the nick of time. Miracles. Those who have had stage four cancer healed. Oh my gosh. So much, so much. Those that have had children that have gone astray for years return home after prayer it's not me it's us together you and us you and me my brothers and sisters praying on one accord two or three touching and agreeing on one accord that's the power praying for one another that's bringing the answers to those prayers all right i'll call you breast i thank god for you may the blood of jesus cover you and protect you may the majesty on high cloak you share this message to somebody I know that it's not a popular message among black people, but you, I mean, do you want the truth or do you want the truth? I want the truth, especially those that revere Martin Luther King. I, I tell you, I give him much respect after he left the boule. Look up that man. You don't believe me? <laughs> if you don't believe what I'm saying, look up Bayard Rustin. Look him up. Look him up. You think Al Sharpton and Jesse Jackson were just so powerful that they've been appointed? No. W.E.B. Du Bois, Black History Month. Sell out. Sold out his people. All right. Stop that, Tim. There they go. Move on. Get it over with. <laughs> I'll call you blessed, and I will see you all on uh, Saturday morning. I think I'm going to post this on Rumble as well, because I might have to take it off of here and put it on Rumble only. We'll leave it for a day or so. We'll see. All right. I'll call you blessed. Praise the Lord God. Adios.